Welcome now to the closing portions of John chapter 5 in this study. We're going from verses 41 on through 47, and it's just an honor and a privilege to have you here with me today as the Lord, through His Holy Spirit, takes us, takes us to the final portions of this fifth chapter of the book of John. Now, if you've been following along up to this point, you've seen some very deep, detailed discussions take place, and nonetheless, there was nothing short of that to take place here in this final portion. I pray that you've read the book of John, or if you haven't, you're in the process of reading the book of John. Usually when somebody comes to the faith, comes to believe in the Son of God of Jesus, the book, the Gospel of John as a whole, is recommended because it reveals the deity, the deity of Jesus Christ and how he is, in fact, the Son of God as well as fully God and fully man. So we see that as well being further described and further touched on in these closing portions from the Messiah, Jesus himself. Let us pray and let's let the Holy Spirit seal this up in beautiful teaching and beautiful truth as we grow together in spirit and in truth. Amen. Father, we thank you for the book of John. We thank you for all of the gospel message. We thank you for all of your word as a whole from the prophets and the apostles and everywhere in between. We just ask that you continue to use my mouthpiece in this segment, that you teach us, that you lead us, that you strengthen us through your holy word, O oh Father God. I pray, Lord, that there would be revelation, that there would be opening of eyes, that there would be healing spiritually and physically, that we'd be strengthened, Lord, just to see you for who you truly are, and through your Son, Jesus, know who you are and what you are doing in our lives. Lord, please speak to us each personally, as well as a whole, that we would walk in unity, and that we would walk in a way that pleases you, bearing much fruit to your glory, Father. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we praise you. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of thanksgiving. And it is indeed God's will that we give thanks, that we walk in gratitude, and that we seek his face and pray and intercede for one another. If you have any prayer requests, please type them in the comment box below. And I will ask that you just please continue to pray that I would have boldness, that I would have courage and strength to share the gospel, not just these video messages, but in person with one-on-one -on -one interactions, with preaching, with evangelism. Just pray for my continuing in the will of Father God for my life as I pray for His continuing to reveal and strengthen you for His will in your life today. And it's in Christ Jesus we can do this, and indeed we shall, brothers and sisters. Verse 31, to continue and close the fifth chapter of John. If I testify about myself, remember this is Jesus speaking, if I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies about me, and I know that the testimony he gives about me is true. You sent messengers to John, being John the Baptist, and he testified to the truth. I don't receive human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. John was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. Now let's touch on something. Psalm 105, or sorry, Psalm 119, verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. In Psalm 36, it also says that you are the light, and in your light we see light. So we see that John the Baptist was walking in the Holy Spirit. We see that John the Baptist was walking in the Word of God, the Word of Truth. That's why he was a burning and a shining light, for it correlates and it connects specifically with how Scripture reveals that to be. So verse 36 but I have a greater testimony than John's because of the works that the Father, the Father, has given me to accomplish. These very works I am doing testify about me that the Father has sent me. 
And remember, Jesus said, if we believe in him, we will go forth to do greater works than him. Yes, I'm sure you've heard by now, right? Casting out devils, the healing of the sick, the walking and bearing fruit in the Holy Spirit. These are all great works that gives the Father glory. But we must be connected to the vine of Jesus. We must be deeply rooted in Jesus and the word that reveals him so that we grow in grace and so that we indeed, by faith, do the works that our Father has given us to do because, as Jesus said, that revealed and was evidence that he was sent from the Father. And so too it is for us that we are in Christ and sent from the Father as well if we do the works the Father has given us to do. Amen? Self-explanatory, self-explanatory. It's beautiful how the Word of God is self-explanatory and the Holy Spirit gives us revelation. This is why we pray. This is why we seek the Lord's face to teach us before we dive into studies because the Holy Spirit teaches us what no man could teach us because He can only reveal spiritual things. So continuing now, verse 37. The Father who sent me has Himself testified about me. You have not heard his voice at any time, and you haven't seen his form. You don't have his word residing in you because you don't believe the one he sent. So Jesus is the one he sent. And back to John 15 again, it says that if we abide in Christ and his words abide in us, we will bear much fruit to his glory. And Jesus says that very simply here. So in a way, John 15 is referencing back to John chapter 5. There's a lot of repetition, and many rabbis of that time did that, but Jesus took it further because he was the Son of God, is the Son of God, and always will be the Son of God. And he teaches with repetition, and that's a beautiful, beautiful thing because without repetition, we, as fickle humans, would forget. Yes, even us spirit-filled people, we would forget without the gracious reminder of our Lord and our God and through his Holy Spirit who reveals all truth. Hallelujah. I'm feeling the joy of the Lord here today. And our faith is not a feeling but glory to God when we can feel the joy of the Lord. Let's continue. We'll repeat verse 38. You don't have his word residing in you because you don't believe the one he sent. You pour over the scriptures because you think you have eternal life in them, and yet they testify about me, says Jesus. They testify about him. But you are not willing to come to me so that you may have life. The word reveals Jesus to us, and then Jesus gives us eternal life and resurrection power through himself, and then through the Holy Spirit, we have the word opened up in a greater context to grow in grace, to grow in faith, and to grow in Christ because the scriptures reveal Christ, Christ reveals the Father, and then the Holy Spirit reveals both as he continues to grow us in this word, which indeed is spirit and life and truth through Jesus, all through Jesus. Know Jesus, forget the rest of that equation. All right, so, but you are not willing to come to me so that you may have life. Verse 41 now. I do not accept glory from people, but I know you that you have no love for God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and yet you don't accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. Like I say today, hey, I'm Michael. I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian, or I'm a Christ follower, right? Preferably, I'm a Christ follower. You'll accept me. Oh, yeah, you're Michael. You're a Christ follower. I, I, I believe you. I take your word for it. John the Baptist came bearing fruit, saying what he, who he was. Okay, I receive you and I accept you. And I, they grew in his light as well. But Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, you don't accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. And he goes on. How can you believe since you accept glory from one another? But don't seek the glory that comes from the only God. So he's saying they don't, people don't have love in them because they reject Jesus, the one who is the manifestation and the example and the perfect definer of what love truly is with sacrifice, humility, righteousness, and complete, complete heavenly wholeness. We need Jesus. And he says we want to receive glory from each other. Think about it. 
how people want to climb the status quo, climb the stakes to go from promotion to promotion to promotion. Not like there's anything bad in growing if it's God's will for us, but if we're seeking the approval of man over the approval of God, we are in a bad place. We're on the wrong road. We're doing the wrong thing. But Jesus corrects us with these statements in love. And he says, no, we need to have love in us. We need to have Christ in us. We need to have the Holy Spirit in us. And we need to seek the glory of the Father God, not the glory of man. We see culture today always trying to pull people in, always trying to deceive, just like that of uh, Proverbs chapter chapter 8 and 9, which refers to the foolish woman and the wisdom, the woman of wisdom. And we see how they're both crying out and calling out. Are we going to follow Christ's voice today and want to glorify God the Father? Or are we going to follow the enemy's voice today and seek the approval of man? There's only two roads, heaven or hell, Christ or Satan, God's heavenly kingdom or the world system. What path are we on today? Let us ask this question and let us see who we're seeking to receive glory and praise from. Is it God or is it the world and Satan? Let's make our mind up and be about the Heavenly Father's business in truth, in honesty, in humility, and in integrity. Verse 45, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Your accuser is Moses on whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me because he wrote about me. But if you don't believe what he wrote, how will you believe my words? But if you don't believe what he wrote, how will you believe my words? We see the Old Testament, the, 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 what you would call the Torah, many would call the first five books of the Bible. It would be Genesis, Exodus. Le Leviticus, or sorry, Genesis, Exodus, yeah, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, those are the books that Moses wrote in the 66 canon, and we find that in those reveals Christ. There's revelation of Jesus in those, and we must find Christ within the scriptures, and the Holy Spirit has come to give us revelation of who Jesus is, and that's why we're doing these studies, and that's why Christ has given us his spirit, and that's why the Father God given, has given us Christ his Son, because we need revelation, we need Jesus, and we need unity and wholeness in one spirit, in one faith, in one baptism, in one truth, in one life in one path of eternity, and that's through Jesus, the Son of God. We see this, we hear this, and we believe this. So if we do, we receive it, and we walk. For now on, when we read the scriptures, we should see where Christ is being revealed, and we should look for the heart of Father God within them so that we can grow in grace, so that we can grow in faith, so that we would not seek the glory of men, but the glory of God who is eternal. And to end this before praying, we're going to say as Christ said, for what can man do to us but kill our body and therefore be done? But God, who has the ability to kill our body and cast our soul to hell, to the abyss, to the pit, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, he is who we should fear. In a lovely and hearty way, we should fear God, reverence God, love him, because he's loved us first and given us Jesus to prove it. What has the world, what has man, what has Satan ever done for us but try to destroy us and take our souls and, and, and make us, make us nothing? But God has given us his son Jesus that we would have freedom and life more abundantly. Amen. Father God, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray that you would help us comprehend these words that you would help us recognize our sinfulness as humanity, that we would surrender that sinfulness, that we would surrender our flesh and crucify it daily, that we would rise up in spirit and truth and live for you by seeking your son, Jesus Christ, by walking in the light of your word and revelation by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray for freedom, freedom, Father. I pray that deception will be burnt up in your presence here and now that there would be victory here and now, and that there would be freedom here and now for your glory, that this whole chapter 5 of John would set captives free, 
would strengthen your body, would strengthen your people, would strengthen your children, my God. In the name of Jesus, your son, I praise you for your love. I praise you for your victories. I praise you, Lord, for never giving up, but picking us up when we're down and teaching us your truth through your Holy Spirit. I give you glory, Father, that we've had this time together in your word and that you are the same and do not change, but are changing us into the likeness of Jesus and yourself. To your glory, let it be so, Father. In all of us as your people, say amen. We'll see you in the next message as the Lord's Holy Spirit leads. Until then, remember you are loved and that God's grace is more than sufficient in Christ Jesus to overcome every obstacle, the enemies of Satan, the flesh, and this world. Stay with your eyes on the author and the finisher of your faith, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen.